Good day students, welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problems one to three of the PARC Algebra One practice test. If you like to download this document or view it, you can go ahead and click on this link right here, okay? All right, let's take a look at problem number one. Before we start, we have a message here from Naruto. It says you can pass this. So um, if Naruto says you can pass this exam, rest assured that you can do well on the exam. Okay? All right, so the problem one says, the cost to manufacture X pairs of sunglasses can be represented by a function C of X. If it costs 398 to manufacture four pairs of sunglasses, which of the following is true? So this problem is assessing your understanding of the notation of a function. Okay? So let's look at the first sentence. It says, the cost to manufacture X pairs of sunglasses is represented by or is equal to C of X. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that down. Um, C of X equals the cost to manufacture X pairs of sunglasses. Okay, all right, so um, X here is your independent variable, and your output or dependent variable is C of X. Now let's take a look at the second sentence and see what we can determine from that. It says, if it costs 398 to manufacture four pairs of sunglasses, so here, note that X represents the pairs of sunglasses that's been manufactured. Here we have four pairs. What does this tell us? This tells us that four is equal to X, or X is equal to four, okay? So in this case, we have, we wanna find the cost of manufacturing four pairs of sunglasses. C of four represents the cost to manufacture four pairs of sunglasses. So what is the cost to manufacture four pairs of sunglasses? $398. Okay, so C of four equals 398. So we can clearly see that the correct answer is option letter C. All right, let's take a look at problem number two. It says, which is a graph of the solution set of the inequality 3x minus 4y is less than or equal to 24. So this problem is assessing your ability to graph linear inequalities, okay? So before we get started, let's go ahead and take a look at the rules that determine the effects on the line, if it's solid or broken, and the orientation of our shading, okay? So if you have the inequality y is less than or equal to mx plus b, in this case, you are going to have a solid line and you're going to shade, shade down, okay? Now, why do you have a solid line? It's because of this So we have a solid line because of this line of inclusion here, okay? This line of inclusion means the line will be solid. Now, why are we shading down? Because it's less than, all right? And then the other case is y is greater than or equal to mx plus b. In this case, we are all going to have a solid line again, and we're going to shade up. All right. Why are we shading up? Because we have greater than. Solid line because of this line of inclusion here. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at 
on this problem we have the inequality the linear inequality 3x minus 4y less than or equal to 24. Now can we determine the direction to shade using this form? The answer is no. In order to determine the direction to shade, you must have y isolated as indicated in these two forms here. Okay, so we must isolate y first before we can determine where to shade in this linear inequality. So how do we isolate y? We um, are going to solve it as though we're solving an equation. The difference between solving an inequality and an equation is that whenever you divide or multiply by a negative number, the direction or orientation of the inequality switches. Okay, so that's the difference. All right, let's go ahead and solve for y. We're going to subtract 3x from both sides and divide by negative 4. All right, let's do that. Subtract 3x, and that yields negative 4y as less than or equal to negative 3x plus 24. Now we're going to divide all sides of our equation by negative 4, negative 4, and negative 4. Now, how do we divide signs? Well, we're going to use a mnemonic device known as the peace sign, okay? It's kind of funny. Use a peace sign to determine how to divide signs. All right, so let's go ahead and draw our peace sign on the side right here. So for our peace sign, um, we have the following signs <clears throat> we have a uh, the negative sign negative negative and then here we have the positive sign okay okay so this peace sign looks like a face you know the eyes are like the negative and then that's the mouth anyway so what this peace sign tells us is that whenever you multiply or divide signs that are the same you end up with positive. Anytime you multiply or divide different signs, you always end up with negative. Okay, so minus plus or minus plus minus times or divided by minus, same signs, you have a plus. See here, minus times minus is a plus. Minus plus times or divided by a plus will give you a minus because the signs are different. Plus times or divided by a minus will give you a minus because the signs are different. So don't forget that anytime you divide signs that are the same, you always have a plus for same. And when you divide signs that are different, you always have a minus for different. Okay? All right, so let's look at here. This situation, minus divided by minus, signs are the same, you have a plus. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So we have y. Now, let's take a look at the inequality symbol. Since we're dividing by a minus or negative, does the orientation switch? The answer is yes. Anytime you divide or multiply by minus, the inequality switches. So less than or equal to becomes greater than or equal to. Minus over minus, the same sign again becomes positive. 3 over 4x plus divided by minus. Signs are different, so you have a minus 24 over 4, 6. Okay, now what have we accomplished so far? We have been able to convert this form into a form that's similar to the y equals mx plus b. And this can enable us to um, determine the accurate direction to shade. Okay, now let's figure out what the slope and y-intercept are. So this is the slope, m, and then this is the y-intercept, b, okay? So b is your y-intercept. Y-intercept, what is the y-intercept here, negative 6? This result is significant because if you look at the graph, we have different y-intercepts. So we want to 
eliminates the graphs that do not have a y-intercept of negative 6. Okay, so option A, the y-intercept. Do you see what the y-intercept is? The y-intercept is 6, where the graph cuts the y-axis. We want negative 6, right? So this should be eliminated, okay, because we want negative 6. For B, the y-intercept is negative 6. That's good. Keep that. Option C, the y-intercept is negative 6. That's good to keep that. For option D, the y-intercept is positive 6. That's no good. We eliminate that. Okay? So our answers have been narrowed down to two options, either option B or option C. Okay? So now let's go ahead and see what can help us determine what the answer is. Well, it is the direction of the shading, okay? How about the slope? What role does the slope play here? Well, let's determine what the slope is. Slope is m, which is rise over run. We have 3 over 4, which means you rise 3 and run 4, starting from your y-intercept, okay? So starting from negative 6 and negative 6. If you rise 3, and run 4, you end up here, rise 3, end up here, and run 4, you end up here. So the slopes of these two lines are identical. So it's not a distinguishing feature. The slope does not help us figure out the answer here. What helps us is the direction of the shading. So what is the direction of the shading considering the fact that we have greater than or equal to? Remember, we talked about that earlier. Greater than means you shade upwards, okay? So think about this as a roof, all right? Which of the shading is upward? If you look at this one right here, this is upward. This is greater than. This one is shaded above. Shade up. Remember, shade up is for greater than or greater than or equal to. This one is shaded down. And this is for less than or less than or equal to. So the correct answer, as we can see, is clearly option letter C, okay? All right, let's take a look at problem number three. It says several points are plotted on the graph. Which of the plotted points on the graph represents the zeros of the function f of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 8 times the quantity x minus 6. Select all that apply. So when you're asked to find the zeros of a function, what you're being asked to do is to solve for when the function is equal to 0. So what x values does the function um, equal zero? Or graphically, where does the function intersect the x-axis? Okay, so there are two steps involved in solving for the zeros of a function. Okay, let's assume that we have a factorable situation, okay? Non-prime polynomials as the components of our function. Step number one involves factoring completely. Okay, so you factor your polynomial completely. And then step number two is that you're going to set your factor from equal to zero and solve. You are going to solve using the zero product property. All right, this algorithm is applicable to factorable polynomials. If not, if they're prime, then you have to resolve to using the quadratic formula or completing the square or other methods, okay? So let's go ahead and go through the steps. Step number one, we're going to factor this function completely. We have x squared plus 2x minus 8 multiplied by x minus 6. Now let's attempt to factor this quadratic trinomial here. We are going to use the x game. Factoring by grouping is not necessary here because a is equal to 1. All right, so ac is negative, 8b is 2. 
think of two numbers that multiply to give you AC and add to give you B. The answer is four and two. Since the sum has to be negative, positive and the product has to be negative, that means the smaller of the two has to be negative, okay? Four minus two is positive two, and then four times negative two is negative eight. Excellent. Now let's uh, factor it. We can go directly to the factored state, x, bring this number down, positive four, times x, bring this number down, minus two, times x minus six. We have this luxury in factorization because a is equal to one. If a were not one, we have to do more, more work in the factorization process, namely factoring by grouping. Okay, we're done with step one. Next thing we're going to do is set our factored state equal to zero and solve using the zero product property, okay? So how do we do that? We just simply set each factor equal to zero and solve. So x plus four, set that equal to zero. x minus two, set that equal to zero. x minus six, set that equal to zero also. To solve the first one, we subtract four from both sides. We have x equals negative four. That's your first zero, negative four, option letter D. Next one, we solve for x, we add 2 to both sides, and we have the second 0, x equals positive 2, that's our next 0. Remember, it's what x equals, okay? And then lastly, um, you add 6 to both sides, and you have x equals positive 6. Positive 6, that's your, your last answer. All right, so those are the zeros that you have um, for, for the function. Our answers are options letter A, B, and D. Okay, so that's that. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to the remainder of the tutorials on this review series. If you have any questions, comments, or need any clarification, feel free to include that in the comments section below this um, video. More clips can be found on math.serve.com. Thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful day.